Good morning. morning. Welcome to our worship at St. Paul this morning. On the first Sunday after Epiphany, Epiphany is on January 6th, we always celebrate the baptism of Jesus. And so today our readings are going to be from the Gospel of Luke on Jesus' baptism. And we remember that we come into God's presence also through our baptism. We are named God's own. We are made his children. He places his Holy Spirit on us. He as at, is at work in our lives, giving us newness and forgiveness and life in these waters. We also hear from the, the, um, the prophet Isaiah this morning as we'll uh, hear our Old Testament reading from Isaiah 43, where God says these words. Now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. So we come today knowing that we are the Lord's, and he welcomes us into his presence. Let's begin with our first hymn. We're going to sing hymn number 405 in the maroon hymnals in front of you to sing, To Jordan's River Came Our Lord. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip to skip like a calf, and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord is over the waters.
The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the earth and stirs the forest there. And in his temple, all the glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Since we are gathered to hear the word of God, which speaks over us in the waters of baptism, to, po- to call upon our God in prayer and praise, which is the response of those who have been made his own, let us confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. As one people, united to Christ's death and resurrection, let us take refuge in the faithfulness of our God seeking his forgiveness and grace. Heavenly Father, we come as your baptized children, confessing that every day we have failed to live our calling as your people. You have called us in our baptism to be holy. You have called us in our baptism to be separate from sin. Almighty God, your merciful Father has declared you in holy baptism to be his child and has gathered you into the family of his church in which he daily and richly forgives all your sins and grants you new life through his spirit. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you for all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, your voice proclaimed him to be your beloved son. 
and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Lead all who are baptized in his name to be faithful in the hearing of your word and in the living out of your callings as your children. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear from God's word. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 43. Now thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my eyes and honored, and I love you, I give men in return for you, peoples in exchange for your life. Fear not, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from afar, and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is taken from Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand as we hear the words of the gospel for us this morning.
Our gospel reading for this morning comes from Luke chapter 3. As the people were in expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Christ, John answered them all, saying, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he preached good news to the people. But Herod, the Tretrarch, who had been reproved by him for Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all the evil things that Herod had done, added this to them all, that he locked up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens were opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove, and a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our sermon hymn number 404, Jesus Once With Sinners Numbered.
Good morning. God's grace, and His mercy, and His peace be with you. Amen. So what's today? Pastor Rago introduced it nicely with the liturgical language with first Sunday after Epiphany. How many of you recognize, oh, Epiphany was January 6th? Yeah? Oh, about half. Not bad. Yeah, some people are putting it on Facebook. But, it's, you know, it's that churchy kind of thing that, uh, like, some of, some of you who are really geeks about that know the Latin names for stuff. And, uh, like, as we, as we come on um, Quinquagesima and Quasimodo Genity, and I know a few of them, but I can't remember what they are. Because <laughs> that was not, I was not that kind of student at seminary. There were things I paid attention to and things I probably... Get, I, then this is actually being broadcast on Facebook. <laughs> but my professors are not watching this. And I have to confess to you, the baptism of Jesus, while I, I recognize its importance in the story of Jesus' life, was for a long time one of those things that was... Well, I think also for you, not something we made a big deal about. No banners for the baptism of Jesus. No special greeting for happy baptism of Jesus day, right? No, I mean, we have a few hymns. Uh, what else? No choir. No brass because it's the baptism of Jesus. It's, uh, is it a big thing? What's, what makes this a big deal? You read the text, and there's a lot of disappointment in it. These people, it says they were in expectation. They're watching John. Literally, the word expectation means that they're watching for. They're, they're watching John, waiting for him to do something. And, and they're getting their hopes up. Because people are coming to him, and it's these big crowds of people coming out to be baptized, and they're coming out all the way out into the wilderness from Jerusalem, and, and uh, there's this buzz going, and he's challenging the authorities, right? And people are dissatisfied with the state of the nation and the, the way the world is going, and he says, this is how God wants it to be, and they're thinking, maybe he's the Messiah, and he says, no. Nope. Not me. But, but he builds their hopes up more. He says, but after me, he says, one is coming who is mightier than I. And if John's bringing all these people out, what will this guy do? And, and if John is challenging the authorities, what will this guy do? And he says, I'm baptizing you with water, but one is coming after me. I'm not even worthy to untie his sandals, and he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Wow. So, what happens? Jesus gets baptized. <laughs> Read these texts closely. Pretty easy to miss. I mean, there wasn't like thunder and lightning. The earth didn't shake. There, there, uh, there wasn't fire. When Jesus was baptized... Lots of people didn't notice. In, in the other Gospels, Luke kind of shortens it, but in the other Gospels, John tells people, he says, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And a half a dozen people hear that. Literally, just a couple of John's disciples go and follow Jesus because he points out the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, which is, that's a huge statement. But it's not like everybody hears that and goes after him. It's just a couple people. So these things are not real obvious. Jesus is baptized, and there's a bird. Well, it's the Jordan River. My house has birds all over the place, and it's January. I'm sure at the Jordan River, uh, the Holy Spirit could descend upon Jesus in the form of a dove, and it's not like there was the glowing light like in the paintings. Who notices? There's a voice from heaven. And some people think it thundered, but... They don't 
hear it. They don't see it. They don't get it. They're waiting in expectation. What happens? This happens to us all the time, doesn't it? I mean, we had, we put together the best call committee I've ever seen. These people were great. They, they really did their homework. They, they did uh, passionate interviews. They spent time with all these candidates. They, uh, uh, they worked hard to find the best person for us to call, and we called Steve Wilson from St. John, Rochester, and what a great guy. We all enjoyed our interviews with him. And, and we're waiting in anticipation as he's considering our call. Is he going to take it or not to be the director of our youth and help our young people grow in faith in Christ? That's going to be so wonderful. And we're waiting. And he called yesterday morning and told me that he's decided to stay at St. John, Rochester. <laughs> you have that feeling that I had yesterday morning? I'm getting it again now just telling you. Oh, your stomach... And I mean, it would have been perfect. Ah, somehow God's will isn't my will. This happens to you at Christmas time? Now, you're an adult, so it doesn't happen to you. And me, you know, I, I tell the kids, you know, I really have everything I need. I don't really need anything. My nose gets a little longer every year. And, and uh, I do have some things on my Amazon wish list. And I've dropped a few hints here and there in the couple of months before Christmas. And then there's, then there's something that's the right size and the right shape. And it could be, it might be what I really wanted. And you open your gift with expectation and it's, Oh, thank you. This is not what I expected at all. <laughs> wow. I'll try this on later. <laughs> this is not a color I usually wear. <laughs> but there's a gift receipt in the box, right? You could return it and exchange it for something else, but that makes you seem like a heel. You don't want to do that. So you're disappointed. I wonder, are we always disappointed with the things God gives to us? These people are expecting something great. And God brings what? What was your baptism like? Pretty exciting day. How many of you know your birth date? Everybody knows their birth date, even the little ones. How many of you know the date of your baptism? Well, about a third. I'm surprised, actually. Probably because in recent years we've been thinking about and reminding people of that more. But do you uh, invite people over for your baptism birthday? Do you have a cake? You open gifts? Is it, do your friends know, hey, it's my baptism birthday? Uh, maybe not so much. Do people come up to you and say, oh, I understand today's the anniversary of your baptism? No, it's, it's kind of on the down low, isn't it? When you, were bo when you were born, when you were baptized, was there fire? Was there a dove? Well, uh, there might have been a dove carved on something or on a banner. There might, might have been a can some candles lit. But it doesn't seem like what John is talking about, that he'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Was it a big deal if you can't remember it? Was it a big deal? Well, I don't remember how I was born. Um, it's, a, it's a topic of hot conversation among people. Uh, in our family, we are uh, 
in that phase of life with our kids having kids, right? So there's conversations about childbirth and labor and delivery and, and all those kinds of things. And so uh, whether you should get an epidural or whether you should, whether you should go on natural, you know, I've, I took the class and I know how to breathe the proper way and we're going to get through this. Um, I have no clue what, how I was born, what my mom did. If you were born in a taxi, probably you have heard that story many times, but all the rest of us who were just born in the hospital, somehow we don't know what took place. Although, did it make a difference in your life? Probably quite a bit. Were you breastfed or bottle fed? Go on the internet. Oh my goodness, I searched that question. Which one's better? Everybody has huge opinions. Did you know that breastfed babies are smarter than other people? But I don't know if I was breastfed or bottle fed. I have no clue. It was the 1950s. It was kind of uh, back and forth. People thought bottle feeding was really sanitary. I don't know. Did it make a difference? Now, people are saying, um, all these allergies, it's because you're introducing foods at the wrong time. You have to introduce these foods in this specific order, or and by, by all means, you don't give them, I don't remember anymore, how old they have to be before they, have to have, before they can get peanut butter. But peanut butter is a staple of life. For, that's how you quiet your children down, right? Here's a spoonful of peanut butter. Stick it in there. But you might be harming them. Do you know when your mother introduced foods to you? I'll bet you don't. Did it maybe make a difference in your life? I know. Your parents fed you. They nurtured you. And they, they helped you grow. And everything they did in that first year that you don't remember anything of shaped who you are. They named you. Right away at your birth, they named you. They, out of all the possible names, they picked your name. Do you like it? My mother is gone, so I can say this. For years, I would think about using this as an illustration, but never do it because my mom would kill me. <laughs> but her real name was not Jean Neuendorf. Everybody called her Jean. But her real name was Elsie, Elsie Jean, and she hated it, never went by it. And it shaped her life to some extent. All the teasing about the Borden cow advertisements for milk, uh, Elsie the cow. My name, my dad picked it because of the first initial. Nobody in the family was named Donald. But he wanted a name that would be, if I had Donald Owen Neuendorf, would be D-O-N. He thought that was very clever. <laughs> it's caused me no end of trouble with people thinking that I'm uh, putting my initials when I'm signing something. Or vice versa. And then people called me Donald Duck. Some people called me Donny Osmond. I don't know why they would bother to do that. Then I have a friend who still calls me, oh, the Donald. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Well, your parents named you and gave you an identity in more than just syllables. They shaped your life. Was Jesus' baptism a big deal? How does it matter to you that Jesus was baptized? He was not baptized because he was sinful and needed his sins to be washed away. The word baptism means to wash. And we, we understand that God washes us spiritually in baptism. But Jesus didn't require that. Jesus didn't need to be baptized in order to be made God's child, right? As we talk about in baptism, being adopted by our Heavenly Father. Jesus was from eternity, the second person of the Trinity, the Son of God. 
Jesus, when he came to John for baptism, in the, not in Luke, but in the other Gospels, John says, you shouldn't come to me for baptism. I should come to be baptized by you. But Jesus says, let it be this way for now to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus was baptized in order to fulfill God's plan, not just for himself. Jesus was baptized in order to fulfill God's plan for you. So Jesus was baptized because you would be baptized. Jesus was baptized because his baptism is connected to your baptism. In your baptism, you were washed and made holy and clean because of the sacrifice of Jesus. In your baptism, you were named, just as in his baptism, his father names him and identifies him. In, his, in your baptism, you were marked. In our baptism service, we say, may I? In baptism, when you were baptized up here, we said, Receive the sign of the Holy Cross upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as one who's been redeemed by Christ who was crucified. May I ask a personal question? Do you have a tattoo yet? No. Well, your mom and dad haven't let you get a tattoo. If you get a tattoo, what would it be? A butterfly? A horse, an anchor going into the Navy. No, God gave you a tattoo. God marked you with the sign of the cross upon you so that you are known as who you are, God's child. Like when when Jesus is baptized and the voice from heaven says, you are my child. You belong to me. God said that to you at your baptism. So sometimes we're disappointed. Sometimes it doesn't seem like as grand as it sounds when he'll baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Is this big enough for you? What we read earlier, and what we read, I think, very fittingly at every funeral from Romans 6. Don't you know? Don't you know, Paul says, that all of us who've been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with Jesus by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. If we've been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. You were baptized so that you could be like Jesus who was baptized, who went into the water and out again so that you would be washed, so that you would be named with his name, so that you would be marked and identified by God as his child. Maybe you cannot remember it. Maybe you don't even know the date, although I'm hoping when you get home, maybe you'll go look it up. Where is that folder with my identity documents? It has, I have a baptism certificate someplace. Maybe it doesn't seem like something that has changed you or shaped your life. But I would suggest before you, before you use that gift receipt and trade it in for something else, try it on. Try on this identity. Try seeing yourself. Look in, put it on and look in the mirror. Who you are as a baptized child of God. That, that this is who I am. 
that I've been marked by God and I am his child. I think that will change everything. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's stand up and sing a verse in response to God's word. Please be seated. We continue our worship by gathering together our offerings. I also ask that you would take the black folder that is on the center aisle here, sign it and pass it, uh, so that we can continue to care for one another in this body of Christ. And also, if you are worshiping with us online, uh, it'd be great if you sign in and uh, join with the others uh, who are gathered with you there. We thank God that you are worshiping with us and part of our family of faith. Please stand as we sing and as we pray.
Heavenly Father, you have fulfilled all righteousness in the baptism of your beloved Son. And you made him know to us he would be the Christ, the one who would save us from our sin. And as we have received this righteousness by our baptism into him, make us bold in faith and fervent in love that we may live out heavenly lives even in this world so that through the love that we show to one another, others would know of your great love. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, as you've opened heaven to your church through holy baptism, we ask that you would then work in and through us to proclaim your Son, Jesus, and that all that we do would then be in accord with the godliness that you have filled us with, that we would walk as your holy people. And we also pray that as we go out filled with this newness and life, that as we proclaim this life to others, many would repent of their sins and join you in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. And we ask that you would preserve the family, especially all Christian homes, Turn husband and wife toward one another in love. We pray that you would equip fathers and mothers for their holy duty as teachers of the faith. We pray that you would preserve all children in the saving faith and certain promises of their baptism unto life everlasting. Lord, visit each of our homes wherever we go to after the service that there you would dwell with us and abide with us. And remind us of your promises as we are filled with your truth. Lord, go with us into our homes and then back out into the world, walking as your people. Lord, in your mercy. Well, Lord, you sent your Son to serve your people and deliver them from sin and death. Because we long for your salvation, we ask that you would bring us out of our afflictions and also that you would uphold all who are bruised in spirit. Today we pray for those who are in need of your work and healing. We pray for those in the hospital, like Mary, Chet, Anna, and Bruce. Lord, continue to surround them with health professionals who will build them up and give them opportunity to have healing and to return home. We pray for many we know with cancer, for Nola, Greg, and Jeremiah, for Pam, Kimberly, and Laura, Doug, Randy, and Abby, for Lauren, Jim, Todd, and Sarah, for Eric, Bethany, and Debbie. Lord, work through the treatment that all, each of these receives. Guide them by your spirit, the trust in you as they continue to see the, this disease that is in their lives. You continue to be at work lifting them up. Lord, we pray for recovery and healing for many others, for Karina and Jeff, for Joan, Muriel, and Herb, for Steve, Branson, Kay, and Donnie. Lord, continue to build them up in strength and help them to return to full health as well. Lord, we also grieve alongside many who grieve in our midst. We pray for the family of Charles Winterstein, for the family of Lois Spade, for Amy Higgins and her family at the death of her father, and Beth Ragel at the death of her brother James. Lord, as we walk through this life, we daily also see death, and it could easily overwhelm us. 
But you, Jesus, have come into this world to die, to sin, and rise to new life. And as we enter into the waters of holy baptism, you mark us as your own, you call us by name, and you also bring us into unity with your death and resurrection so that our life is made new and we have hope of eternal life to come. And so as we and these who grieve rest in these promises... Fill us with that sure and certain hope that you will raise us once again renewed in life in you. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have made yourself known as your Holy Spirit works faith in us, helps us to see the grace at the baptism of your dear Son, which was also made our own. And with your voice, you directed us to the one who has borne our sins, that we would receive grace and forgiveness. And so we pray that you would keep us in this faith. And since we have been baptized according to your command and the example of Jesus, strengthen our faith by your Spirit and lead us to everlasting life and salvation. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. John answered them all, saying, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming. When Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heavens were opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. I want to point out a few things that are coming up here at St. Paul. Inside your worship folder, you'll uh, find an insert for next step workshops that we have coming up here at St. Paul. In the next few months, we'll be having three different workshops that are meant to help us as this body of Christ here at St. Paul to explore following Jesus together and and ways that we can do that, answering questions about what it means to to follow Jesus. What does that look like? Uh, How do we live that faith out in our everyday lives? And so uh, we have one coming up on January 22nd and a couple Saturdays. Uh, These will be in uh, in the fine arts room up at our school. And um, there'll be from 9 to noon, there'll be a, a little uh, breakfast from 8.30 to 9 if you'd like to join a little early. And there's information on each of those workshops on the back of that uh, insert also. Um, they're each unique, so there'll be three different ones, but each of them can stand alone. So if you can only make it to one of these, awesome, we'd love to have you there. If you can make it all to all three, fantastic. You'll be blessed by being at any of them that you can attend. If you can't make the first one, you can attend any of the other ones. Um, Uh, We know that uh, God uh, is working in our lives, and we follow Jesus better when we follow Jesus together. And so one of the opportunities that we have to learn about that will be at these workshops coming up. So you can use the QR code to sign up or uh, or go to um, our website to to find that there. We'd love to have you at any or all of those that, uh, that you can join us at. Um, also, our elder is Josh today, so uh, Josh will be up here by the piano after service. Uh, he'd love to pray for and with you for any needs that you have this morning. Also, uh, as you head out, um, take your uh, worship folder with you, take the insert with you. There are a few other things happening in St. Paul I want to make sure that you um, can jump into or uh, join into as we start this new year. I pray that you're blessed as God continues to fill you with his word and surrounds you with the body of Christ as we have gathered here, knowing that he has called us by name. You are his own. Let's go as we sing in his name.